A Song to the Tune of Love by It's Underslash Kingston on AO3. Episode 31. Chapter 8. Yes, Salmon, we're back. Ordering took longer than seating, but once it was completed and the waiter left, the racket glanced across the table. Most people were talking amongst themselves. Twice was talking excitedly to Toga, who turned the conversation with just as much energy. Midori and Kaminari were talking, despite them being several seats apart. The latter said something, causing Midori to laugh. Tabi said something quietly to Todoroki, who smiled softly and nodded. Also, he was nodding along with Jiro as she told her and Ashui a story. Bakugo not interacting with anyone, staring down at the table, his jaw tight. Hey, Katsuki, a word? He glanced up at her and narrowed his eyes, as if he were confused. Todoroki nodded to the door. Sure, he said. I'll be right back, Uraraka said to Toga. Okie dokie. They stepped outside the room, and the chatter of the restaurant hit them in full force. Jeez. Bakugu kept walking, and Uraraka followed him. They ended up outside, listening to the hum of distant cars and conversations far quieter than any thus far. Are you all right? Uraraka asked. Bakugo's answer came quickly. Of course I am. What kind of stupid question is that? Even you normally have more patience than that. It seems like you're antagonizing everyone, not just the League. Is it because... Not for whatever shitty reason you have. They're going to slip up, and I'm gonna make sure none of you stupid fools are hurt when it happens. He kicked at the receiving that danced along the sidewalk. What kind of asshole litters when there's a fucking trash can right there? He picked it up and stiffed it through the bin, a few feet away from where they stood. Uraraka put a hand on his shoulder. I appreciate that, but trust me, Katsuki, they're not horrible people. They're people who's trying just as much as everyone else, who happen to get dealt a terrible hand. Think about how much organized crime rate has dropped. They aren't doing anything. Stupid bloodsuckers gonna end up killing you one day. Katsuki grumbled. Her and her shitty team. She's not. Uraraka said firmly. Bakugo cast a glance towards her. I'm serious. I really do love her. And I know you don't really care how long we've been together, but she's not gonna hurt me. Well, you get what I mean. He was silent for a moment. A year and a half is a shitty amount of time to base that off. I could fake something for a year. Hell, I could do it for a decade if I wanted to. I'm a damn better actor than she is. She couldn't help the laugh that she let out. Sure, whatever you want to think. Fuck off! Pocky go hissed. I really am. Mm-hmm. So you drag me out here to insult me? And they call me impolite. Pocky go tossed his hands up. Are you mad about the whole thing? Uraraka asked. She stuffled her hands into her pockets. She felt the little box resting there and was comforted by its presence. I don't care about him being an idiot. Not like we're going to hurt anyone. You're causing some tension, though. Uraraka admitted. It's already tense to begin with. It wasn't really a great idea having everyone here all at once. But I wanted everyone to meet. It's kind of my fault, too. It makes sense that everyone's here for the proposal. I'll invite everyone I tolerated, too. He said, Aw, are you trying to cheer me up? Uraraka asked teasingly. Ew, fuck no. I'm saying you aren't wrong. I'll just leave or something. I don't care. Uraraka caught him by the shoulder as he turned to leave. Hey, seriously, Katsuki. If you feel more comfortable leaving, then I won't stop you. But I want you to be here. I wouldn't have let you come if I didn't. You're just as important to me as Katsuki. You're just as important to me as Izuku and Mina. And everyone else I asked to be here. Even the bloodsucker? Unfair question. I'm not answering. He smiled at that. Damn. You do like her, huh? What gave that away? The whole dating her thing? Shut up. Bakugo said. 
I'm being nice. Don't mock me. I know, Uraraka said. Thanks. I don't want your damn praise. I want the food I was promised. You're staying? Uraraka asked. Bakigo sighed. I won't blow up the portal, loser. Everyone else is on the table if they piss me off. Nope, Uraraka said. Not our friends, the restaurant, the staff, the civilians, or Kirigiri, Himiko, Jin, or Spinner. They started walking back inside. The other two really do try to piss people off, so they're fair game. Dobby choked out a laugh. The fuck? I'm serious, Ashiro said. What do you think would happen? Death? Kaminari chimed in. Lots of death. Midoriya looked at him, eyes wide. What? Todoroki smiled into his cup. She asked me to try it a number of times. Because I wanted to know. It's the pursuit of science. Ashiro announced loudly, pumping her fist into the air. Not without one of us, it isn't. Dobby replied. Come on, Shoto. Your brother is being a bitch. Shouldn't you need a man up and help? Ashiro said. No. He murmured. I don't want to. Ashiro scoffed, leaning back in her chair in an overdramatic display of betrayal she felt. Rude! What's happening? Uraraka asked. She glanced around at everyone. Oh, Chaco, he's your friend, right? Make him help me! Ashiro jabbed a finger at Dobby, a playful smile on her face. Dobby didn't return one. Help you what? Test something for the sake of science. Suyu said. She looked mildly amused. Bakugo walked back to his seat, flopped down. He probably doesn't want to help because it's stupid. Is this whether your acid can melt fire again? Uraraka asked. Ashido nodded. I need to test it. Come on, two people with fire quirks and neither want to help me. Wait. She turned towards twice. Can't help, he said with a shrug. The clone would be just like them, neither wanting to help, so the clones wouldn't help either. I don't want to make one for you anyways. Ashido groaned and leaned back in her seat again. Is that not an interesting question? Uh, it would put out the fire if you dropped it on top, then probably melt through whatever it was put on. But Aria said, depending on what the fire was on, it could explode. Now we're getting somewhere, Bakugo said. No, no explosions in the restaurant. Jiro said. That's why you're half dead, dumbass. We'll take it outside, Kaminari replied. It actually sounds fun. You gotta support the other members of your squad, right? He looked between Jiro, Ashiro, and Bakugo. Maybe if we do it in the alleyway, besides this place. Jiro murmured. That isn't safe. So you said. She didn't sound particularly worried. Hell yeah! Ashiro said to Jiro, ignoring the safety concern. Hey, loud blonde number two, do you... Am I one or two? Kaminari asked. You're three, because Katsuki's louder than you. Who's one? I'll beat them too. Bakugo growled, his head snapping over to Toga. She's not louder than me. I hold my place as one. Included in the loud blonde group, but Jin isn't? Toga asked. Twice as blonde? Ashido asked. I'm included in the loud blonde group, but Jin isn't? Toga asked. Twice as blonde? Ashido asked. He nodded. I've got some dope hair, just hard to see it. Well, I guess there's five loud blondes now, Ashido said. Number one was Mike Sensei. Truly the loudest blonde, Jiro said. He almost defeated me once, not even while using his quirk. Pen drops can defeat you, dumbass, Bakugo said. He only wins because it's quirk, though. He smacks a hand to his chest. I'd win otherwise. Yeah, Uraraka said. You really would. Okay, all right. Bakugo being soft. I actually like Ochako and Bakugo friendships. 
right? As I mentioned before, I really like Jiro and Bakugo friendships because, again, Jiro will, you know, it, it's kind of that not bullshitting friendship type of friendship. While with Uraraka and Bakugo, I feel like they would uplift themselves with each other. Does that make sense? Like Uraraka would be like, oh my god, yes. They'd be like the competitive friend group. Like you have, no, not friend group, but friend duo. Have you ever seen a duo of friends? Or like they're really cool, two different personalities, but somehow there's a certain point where they switch personalities. Where one's more tame and one's more like, for example, in this situation, like where one's more soft and tame and the other is more loud and unfunctious. And it's only in certain situations when that is unlocked and they bond over that shit. Yeah, them. Also, I feel like it would be interesting to see, you know, the whole, um, you know, one is very loud, enthusiastic, very um, harsh and rough. Uraraka too, and you know, imagine the situation. They're out and about, and somebody tries to take advantage of Uraraka in the sense of like, um, say something to her, and thinking that Uraraka is just gonna fucking take it, right? And they turn to Bakugo, it's like you're not gonna defend fucking, like you're, you're not gonna defend her. And Bakugo just smirks like, fuck no, I'm not gonna defend her. She can defend herself, bitch. And having Uraraka to absolutely like, you know, go hard on the other guy. Exactly. That. That. The whole... The whole... Even even the sense of like, okay. There is there is tropes out there with Bakugo. Where Bakugo calls everybody nicknames. Except Ashido. Not Ashido. Asui. Sue. Except Sue. Just Sue. He's like, oh yeah. Uh, raccoon eyes. Earjack. Uh, eye bags. Deku. Oh yeah, and, and Sue. You know, like, you know, just having her as like a regular name, I feel like this would be another one where it's like, oh yeah, Nudoraka. Why does she get to have her name? She earned it, bitch. You know what kind of situation? You know, you know, you know, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I like the friendship. I don't know about you, but I love the friendship. So I love that friendship. Anyways, as always, my rain drops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.